CLI on a cross-platform IDE for C and C++. Download now. I really like C++. One of the things I really like about C++ is ranges. Um, ranges brought loads of things uh, to us with C, uh, in C++20. One of the things it brought was a new design pattern. Um, now, imagine I want to put something into this filter. What I, all I want to do is, in my view, uh, just pull out the things that evaluate in a Boolean context to true. That's great. There's a thing we can do with that. Static cast them to bool. Uh, minor problem, this doesn't compile. Uh, the pattern that ranges brings in is to say, well, what we could do is we could wrap that static cast in a lambda, but instead of putting it in a lambda, we'll just remember that lambdas are just shorthand for function objects. We'll put it into a function object. We won't give the class a name, but we will give the object a name. We'll put it inline and const extra, and we'll use that. It's a great little design pattern. One of the key things it lets you do is overload the call operator, and you can't do that with lambdas. Um, but there is a problem. It's a perennial problem in programming, and that is naming is hard. This pattern has got so many names, and frankly, I don't really like any of them. Sometimes they're called Niebloids, after Eric Niebler, who pretty much invented ranges. I've seen the phrase range adapter object or anonymous function object. All of these aren't great. Niebloid actually describes the effect rather than the design pattern itself. It's not only related to ranges, so I don't like range adapter objects. And the object isn't anonymous. The type isn't named, but the object itself very much is. Filter, transform, they are all examples of this same design pattern. Those are definitely names. So we need to come up with a better one. So observing that you generally use const extra and inline with this design pattern. If you're in a single translation unit or putting this as a member of class, you'll also want to use static. We're overloading the call operator in an object. That means these are functors. Now, I know some people don't like the use of word, the word functor like this uh, because they say, no, 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 that's not what a functor is. Category theory says it's something else. It's okay for the same word to be used in different meanings in different contexts. If you disagree with this, please stop using the word category in a different way to the rest of the English-speaking world. When you've done that, we can resume the conversation about functor. And as an Object, it's an instance. So this is the static const extra inline functor instance. It just trips off the tongue, doesn't it? But what if C++ without acronyms? Look, there's another one on there. Customization point object Tell, tells you exactly what's going on, doesn't it? Uh, so if we take the acronym for static const extra inline fun function instance, we've got the sci-fi pattern. Such a better name, isn't it? But I think we can do even better because that static isn't always there and some people don't like the word functor. So, in the immortal words of Kevlin Henry, I am going to respect their right to be wrong by choosing a different name. Anonymous function object almost gets there. Here's the pattern as it is. It's not that the object is anonymous, it's its type or it's class that's anonymous. It's an unclassified function object. I think you can see where I'm going with this. Because the reason we should use these names is because imagine you're at a party. Now do, do calm down, I did only say imagine. Okay, but what you really want to do is get back to your coding. Uh, someone might ask you, and what is it you do for a living? And you say, I'm a computer programmer. And then I'll ask you to try and fix your computer and their computer, and you'll never get away. But what if instead you said, well, I'm trying to make a living through my hobby, which is writing sci-fi. But sometimes to pay the bills, I do have to take on a contract. And I recently took on one. I can't tell you too much, but some colleagues and I the other day did build a UFO. I guarantee you, you will never be invited back to that party again. <laughs>